What is going on everyone? I wanted to make a quick video to tell you about a new step function feature that is going to make it a lot easier to develop your state machines. For those of you that aren't familiar with step functions, it's a service that's offered by AWS that helps you orchestrate workflows, typically using serverless components such as Lambda, SNS, and DynamoDB. And by the way, I have a whole video on step functions where I do an overview of what they are, and I'll leave that in the comments section if you're interested in watching. But the problem with using step functions is that the way you define what your workflow actually does is kind of confusing and uses a language called ASL or Amazon States language. Writing ASL directly isn't a huge deal. In fact, before this new feature was out there, that's exactly what you would have to do. But it requires you to be familiar with the ASL syntax. And if not, you need to jump back and forth between the documentation and your workflow definitions to find the right types, figure out the right parameters, test everything out, et cetera, et cetera. Overall, it's just not a good developer experience writing ASL directly unless you're pretty experienced. So this is the problem that AWS is trying to solve by introducing Step Functions Workflow Studio. And there's a fantastic article over here on the AWS blog posts. And this article goes through what this new feature is more in depth, but here's a quick little preview of what it looks like. Uh, so as opposed to writing your language directly, it's kind of this drag and drop studio style where you have a bunch of widgets that are on the side and you can just drag and drop and connect them uh, using this neat little GUI. And by the way, I'm gonna leave a link to this great article down below in the comment section. I highly suggest you give it a read. Now, what I wanna do next is just head over into the console and just give you a little demo of this thing in action so you can get a feel of what it's like in real life. All right, so here we are in the AWS console in the step function section. So in order to get started creating our first workflow, we're gonna go ahead and click on get started here. And this is gonna bring you to the old version of creating your workflow. Uh, so this is how you used to do it prior. You had to kind of type in all of your syntax here, get the right types, and then over on the right, it gives you a preview of what you're trying to build. Uh, it, it's all right, like it gives you a pretty good view of what's happening, but you don't necessarily know, like is this a Lambda? Like what is it doing in each of these steps? So it's not very indicative of what the workflow is actually doing besides just the comments that are embedded throughout. Uh, so this used to be a big pain. So how you get to the new section now is you can see here, you can also skip this and visually design your workflow here. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna click on that. And this is the new kind of wizard that walks you through the process of creating your new workflow. So as you can see, you have a bunch of different options on what you want to do. So this is the new thing where you can design your workflow visually, uh, and this is the old way. So write your workflow in code. So obviously we're going to pick on this new one. Then we're going to go to the bottom right, click on next here, and this should launch the studio. And here it is. This link over here gives you a reference to the documentation in case you want to learn more about this. All right, so let's close that out and just get started with this. So the example that I wanna work through here is uh, say we get a step function invocation that contains a credit card transaction and that credit card transaction could be of type purchase or refund. So what I wanna do in my workflow is create a kind of a branching task here where if it's of type purchase, then we go to the left and we save to the purchase DynamoDB table. And if it's of type refund, then we go to the right and we add a record to the refunds DynamoDB table. Over on the left-hand side here, we have the actions and flow section where you kind of drag and drop the components into your workflow. Uh, so the actions are essentially the AWS services and the corresponding APIs, I suppose you can say, that you are gonna be integrating with. And you can see there's a whole bunch of different ones here, Dynamo, uh, EKS, ECS, um, what do we have, EMR, there's glue jobs that you can run here, whole bunch of different things. Uh, this covers most of the bases in terms of uh, functionalities that you want to achieve in a workflow. And under the flow section, this is kind of your uh, control flow structures. So choices in order to branch, parallels to do thing in parallel, maps if you want to iterate, passes just to label, uh, waits for time, delays, and so on and so forth. Um, so that's kind of what's going on on the left. Over on the right here is going to be our context. Uh, whenever we click on a component, once we drop in here, it's going to give us a whole bunch of context options that we can fill out with respect to that particular element. So the first thing we want to do is just take a choice function in here and just drop that in. And you can see here we have two rules, so we can go left or right. And the way this works is that we need to modify the criteria for the rule so that it knows to go left or right. Uh, so if you click on choice here, you see over on the right there's rule number one. What we want to do is click on edit and then we're gonna add a condition 
and it's going to be a simple condition. We want to say uh, state dot, uh, let's say transaction type would be my input and is equal to, and then we want to say it is a string, yeah, string constant, and then purchase. So that can go that way. Uh, so now that's what rule one is. So the left-hand side is the purchase path. What I usually like to do anyways is just put a pass function in here so that I can label it. So um, this is the purchase path and you can see here it'll update, there you go. And the other one for, well not default here, so we're gonna click back on choice and then we're going to add a, another rule here. There we go, add a, actually I don't want default. Can I edit default? Uh, do, 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 do. Let's try this actually. Uh, actually no, let's clear that. Oops, well the good thing about this tool is that you have a undo so that you can quickly undo and redo if you make a mistake. I don't believe you're, you're able to get rid of this, but anyways, let's just add a second rule here. Um, yeah, you can't really drag these out of different orders. So you have some limited control in terms of how you can actually make this look. Uh, so let's go back here and modify this rule. We want to basically take this same thing and we want to do that for rule number two, uh, add condition, same thing. Um, I believe I had this copied and pasted. Transaction type comparator is equal to, and then string constant and then refund. Click on save conditions now. Now we have two new rules here, one's for the left and one's for the right. Let's add another pass here. Uh, this is the refund path and that should refresh, perfect. Anyways, uh, what you can do now is we want to go back to actions. We want to find DynamoDB because we want to put these to the corresponding table. We're going to say put item and then we're just going to drag that in there. And we want to do the same thing on the other side. This should be, yep, there we go. Uh, so for put item, I'm going to click on that. And then once we're in here, there's a whole bunch of different context options that are available to you. Uh, so over here are the API parameters that you want to pass in. Uh, in terms of filtering out the input, you click on the input tab. Uh, you can extract certain elements from your input event. Uh, so maybe you only want to take a certain couple of keys and their values from the input event and put that into the table. That's where you would do that here. And of course, output, you can transform your output path if you'd like. The neat thing here is there's also error handling. Uh, so you can add retries, you can add a new catch statement, you can add a timeout, uh, you can add a heartbeat if you expect this operation to take a long time. This is all stuff that you usually had to do anyways uh, through the ASL language. It was just a lot more manual. Um, so that's like pretty much it for our basic workflow here. I'm not going to actually put this to the corresponding tables, of course, just to give you an example of what's possible. Uh, so once you're done, you just go ahead and click on next. And you can see here, it actually generates the corresponding ASL for this function. Uh, and this is the neat part of it. it, makes it a whole lot easier. So now from now on, you don't really need to worry about modifying this directly. You can always do it through the workflow studio in order to create your workflows. Once you're done, you go all the way to the bottom, click on next, and then it's gonna ask you for some additional properties here. You can name your thing, of course, Scroll all the way to the bottom and click on create state machine and you're pretty much done. You just click on start execution. You pass in your data here in order to test it out. Of course, this is not going to work correctly and everything is going to fail. Um, but this just gives you an example of how to put together these workflows using the new workflow studio as part of step functions. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other ones on the right about step functions. And as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe.